Let's talk about this with energy commentator Charles McAllister, who joins us. Good morning to you. Morning, Julie. Thank How's you it very going? Much. Very well indeed. Um, you're former director at the UK onshore oil and gas, um, but you're now an energy commentator. I want to ask you about a few of these stories that have been going around. We had the ULES charge. Um, we've also seen uh, Institute for Energy Research saying reality is hitting Europe's net zero plans. Um, we've got um, a polls showing that voters are simply not prepared to stomach higher taxes to achieve net zero sooner. We've got Red Bull Tory MPs telling the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, uh, let's put 2050 net zero targets to a referendum. Uh, we've got the lack of charging points for electric cars. Uh, we've had the, you know, the people, anti-ULES people, anti-low-traffic uh, neighbourhood people winning victories there, um, although ULES is still expanding, but it's their Labour have now taken off the, the agenda of expanding it in other cities, realising how unpopular it is. But, but actually, the, you know, the fact that they've, there's now a campaign to stop this ban on the sale of new hybrid diesel and petrol cars in 2030 because again we're not prepared ready for that we haven't got the electricity we haven't got the charging points etc and people haven't got the money to buy these cars still more expensive do you think we've hit peak next zero and is a lot of that about people actually discussing this and even the likes of the bbc and sky news finally getting to grips with the idea that this isn't a free deal I think this debate is not going to go away, but it is fundamentally being driven by an information vacuum in how decarbonisation will be funded for the next 27 years. Because look, I mean, decarbonisation to date has focused on electricity and also offshoring of industry. People forget about that because manufacturing as a share of GVA has declined massively. I mean, look, there's been a 99% reduction in emissions from the Scottish iron and steel industry. That is not because they are particularly innovative, it's because <laughs> it's gone. Yes. Um, but look, as we move into other sectors, it becomes much more interventionalist, home heating, diet, transport, or in one word, lifestyle. Yeah. And why that is funded, it really still is an open question. There are three options, quite frankly. One, a tax on industry, in which case they'll disappear. Two, government pays for it, in which case our national debt increases, or costs and, and taxes and that are levied on the general public, in which yeah. case there'll be public outcry. That, that's just the simple truth. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. When I keep talking to green people who say, no, no, you know, the public are very concerned about this issue. I'm like, everyone's concerned about everything when there isn't a cost to them, and then they change their mind. And we had all this pushing, I mean, I still see, I mean, what is virtually propaganda going out on many media about things like heat pumps? They don't work. They're not fittable for most homes. I, I say you can, you can take my gas central heating thermostat out of my cold, dead hands, because they will be cold and dead, because I will fight to the death to keep my good central heating that actually keeps me warm in the winter. Um, you're talking about people facing, you know, this idea, well, you should, you should be taxed more and more depending on how many flights you get. Well, it depends what people how people choose to spend their money. You know, I, I, buy, my, my, I buy my clothes from H&M and Zara, but, but I like going on lots of holidays. That's how I choose to spend my money, thank you very much. I don't see why I should be taxed ad infinitum because that's what I want to do. We're talking about people being basically taxed out of eating meat told they limited me um, and, and, and having to live in the cold. People not being, I mean, under the current plans, the, the current laws, legally legally entrenched in this country, in, in a few years' time, you won't be able to sell a home unless you've actually upgraded its, uh, its energy rating to a point where you can have to spend thousands on insulation, and by the way, government grants aren't going to cover it all, or install a heat pump, again, to the tune of like 10 grand uh, plus, which probably won't heat your home, even if it was possible to be put in. People aren't going to be able to move home. People aren't going to be able to rent a home. I mean, pe people aren't going to be able to drive around because you're going to be required to have a new car that is, uh, that is uh, a, a, an EV car, electric vehicle, when there aren't any charging points. And even where there are charging points, like there is outside my home, it hasn't worked for the last year um, and and even when we do get enough charging points we won't have the electricity to power all those cars because we're not building any new nu nuclear power stations absolutely I mean we've talked about before about how much capacity is needed just to meet the net zero electricity targets in yeah. 2035 world's largest wind farm every 10 weeks needed not gonna happen we have to look at how tax takes gonna vary over time as well I mean look at the North Sea it's raised 375 billion pounds your previous guest, I mean, it's, I'd be literally stole exactly what I was thinking. Where's the money going to be raised from? What's the revenue yeah. raising machine here? I mean, in my previous job, I mean, fracking could have raised up to 197 billion, yeah. but the government decided to, to bin that, unfortunately. Look at another thing, fuel duty. 
raises 25 billion a year when we're not using petrol and diesel cars how are we going to how are we going to raise that i think the bigger broader problem here is energy literacy i was listening to one of your interviews a few weeks ago when you interviewed a shadow minister and you asked him what percentage of our energy comes from wind and solar and he didn't even have a slight clue um and i mean like, god, yeah. god, god bless him he did but as i pointed out this is a man who's going to be in the cabinet <laughs> um, it could well be in the cabinet in a year's time. It certainly wants to be. I, I'm fascinated by how many MPs who, who make decisions on these things, even government ministers and shadow ministers, who, who talk about, oh, oh, but wind power is whatever percentage of our energy need, energy consumption right now. It's like, when, when they talk about that, it's, they're talking about electricity consumption, and they don't realise that 80% of our energy consumption is is not electricity whether it's cars whether it's trans you know other transport whether it's heating our homes whether it is making things you can't make concrete with just electricity you can't make steel with just electricity as you say we've managed to get to these carbon emission um, targets we've been having so far we've managed to go down because we've just closed down our industry